I am exaggeration, one of animation's finest components. I'm not boring like you, realism. Ugh, how dare you! I am the mighty realism. I am the only truth. Is that so? Well, truth bearer, prepare to meet my army. Rawr, rawr. How quaint, an army. Way to exaggerate. But I've come prepared as well. <laughs> guys, guys, you should be ashamed of yourselves. You're siblings. You have to work together. No, we opposites. We can never work together. Well, realism finger, then this video might just change your mind. And yours too. Find out just how exaggeration and realism can work together to make your animation the best it can be. As if this epic intro wasn't enough, we're gonna start this segment off with an anecdote from the animation book of animation books, The Illusion of Life. One sunny and or rainy day, Walt Disney asked his animators for more realism in their work. Consequently, they started to make animations with closer to life motions and more realistic proportions. When Walt Disney saw this, he couldn't believe his eyes and demanded a more exaggerated style again. As you can imagine, this caused some confusion. How can he ask for realism and exaggeration at the same time? Well, the problem here is not that Walt Disney couldn't make up his mind. It's more a problem of definition. His staff members understood the terms to be opposites and admitted that's what most people would instinctively think. You know, on the one hand side, there's something realistic. On the other hand side, there's something exaggerated. However, Disney understood that something can be realistic in a way and exaggerated at the same time. How is that possible? Let's have a closer look at the definitions of realism. On the one hand side, realistic refers to, well, what we think it does in colloquial usage. A subject which has the given forms, shapes, proportions, colors and follows the same physical rules as its real life counterpart, assuming it has one. For example, a painting of a fruit basket that looks like you can reach in and eat its contents. Or an anatomically correct and impressively shaded drawing. Or a rotoscope animation. In other words, something that looks and moves close to identical to something that we could find in our world is this kind of realistic. In animation, this can even apply selectively to one single element of your animation. Uh, take the lions in Lion King, for example. They're obviously not realistic, not real lions. But in the animation, you can feel that there are muscles and bones under their skin. So uh, in this perspective, it's really realistic. On the other hand side, you have Adventure Time, where the characters can uh, shape shift and change volume uh, without any link to real anatomy. As logical as this real things are realistic, duh, definition seems to be, it's actually not as rock solid as one might think. This starts with simple problems of perception. Take colors, for example. We only see a very narrow spectrum of light. Uh, some animals see significantly more, some see less. So the realistic painting of a fruit basket might not look like the real colors to some animals. Some of them would miss colors that we humans can't see. And because we can't see them, the painters didn't put the colors in there. And it doesn't stop there. What I see as red in my brain might look completely different in your brain. We have the same input from the outside world and we call it the same name, but there is no way to check that the picture in my head is identical to the picture in yours. We also might already be in the matrix and just think that we have bodies that can see things. Pretty spooky. But wait a minute, if everything that we see gets its final shape in our mind, what is with other stuff that only exists in our head? 
What's with emotions, ideas, wishes, motivations? And now we are getting to the second possible way to understand the term realism and to what Walt Disney was actually referring to. Authentic emotions and believable behavior. And this is often more reflected in the acting than it is in the design. It doesn't matter if the character is drawn in a realistic style or in a cartoony style. He still can behave realistically, namely act like a real human personality. In this situation, with this background story and the rules of this particular world. This is why we can feel with animals in so many animated films. We feel hope, love, cry with those animal characters because they feel like real human beings to us. Isn't that interesting? Although they look cartoony, simplified or not human at all, in other words not real, they have something very real to them. And the outside appearance has nothing to do with it. In fact, a real life actor might look more human, but if his performance isn't believable, it will be less real than a very cartoony but genuine animation. Although if all this is realism now, what exactly is exaggeration? And here's where our instincts are wrong again. We might think it's something that steps away from reality. But can't you only exaggerate something that's already there in real life? If a person has a big nose and you draw that person with an even bigger nose, it's certainly connected to reality. It's reality plus x, reality square, reality with a twist, whatever you want to call it. It takes something real and pushes it. And while the most notable feature of exaggeration is what it pushes, whatever you play down or leave out has just as big an impact. Here's another pair, reduction and exaggeration, that is often seen uh, as opposites but really should work together. Look at a smiley face. It exaggerates the emotion while reducing unnecessary details like hair, wrinkles, noses. It certainly is filtered and distorted reality. But if the emotion behind it is real, it might still be real by Walt Disney's definition. But to really judge that, you would need to know the context, scene and character, because only then you can tell if this emotion is appropriate and believable. This is getting really complicated. So let's examine why we make exaggerated drawings by analyzing the smiley dude. Smileys are used to express emotions, and to do that properly, they need to be almost nothing but emotion. There is barely any line left that is not needed to express the emotion. We could leave out the outline, but if we leave out the eyes or the mouth, the emotion is not unmistakably clear anymore. You can still take a guess, but you might be wrong. So here is what exaggeration and reduction did for us. Lines that are not needed for the emotion are reduced, while the lines that are needed for the expressions are exaggerated. This goes far beyond just drawing somebody with a bigger nose. If we assume that emotions are real, bringing them out through exaggeration makes your picture even more real. Think about it. In animation, you can bring out the inner reality of a character onto the surface, far more than a real-life actor ever could. Don't get me wrong, a real-life actor also works hard on bringing out what a character is feeling inside, but the possibilities in animation are even greater. You can push every post to sneak in some extra clarity about the inner reality. Look at this example from Hotel Transylvania. We can't help it but to register the strong emotion and we are not bothered by the character being off balance. His anger is keeping him up. If a character practically flies while walking, we can't help it but feel the lightness of joy. Or in another case, somebody can be distorted and pulled down from sadness. Even the exaggeration or reduction of a background can help to emphasize the emotion of a character. 
or you could incorporate an inner character trait in the character's permanent design. Sometimes exaggeration in motion can be used to convey the world rules of a world that's different than ours. Take Tom and Jerry for example, where thank god exaggeration makes pain weirdly okay. But this is a very uh, different big topic ahead there. Fact is, the possibilities of animation are endless. But and this brings us back to Disney's pleading for realism. Exaggeration is worth nothing if it isn't authentic. If there's a real reason, a motivation, an emotion behind your animation, it can benefit from both the clearness and focus of exaggeration and the authenticity and believability from realism. This was Ferdinand Engländer for Animator Island. Thank you very much for watching. And um, to show me that you are real, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel, leave a comment or a like, and I will see you next time. Take care and goodbye.